What's up, this is Austin from Make Pop Music and Austin Hall Audio, and today we're going to be taking a look at my home studio. What's up everyone, today we're going to be going over my home studio. This has been requested a ton, especially since I moved into my new space last year. So today we're gonna basically talk about my studio, what the room is like, we're gonna go over all of my gear, um, and then I'm gonna be answering any questions that y'all have in the comments below. So by the end of this video, you should be able to kind of get a vibe for the room that I'm working in every single day. Uh, maybe you'll get some gear recommendations, and then if you have any questions about things to add to your home studio or anything about mine, you can just leave them in the comments below. And I did just wanna warn you guys that I am making this video but this is not to brag or to flex my gear or anything like that I just get a lot of questions and people wanting to see the studio um, I'll post a little picture right here this is the studio that I had when I went full-time and I was a professional I was literally getting paid clients just in a corner of my living room on a desk from Walmart an old HP laptop and like a focus right interface and some headphones so you definitely don't have to have this room that's fully treated and has all of this expensive gear um, but it does help and it does make the process really really fun and I think it is something that most of you guys can probably work your way up towards but don't let this video discourage you or feel like you know, I'm never gonna get good results because I don't have that preamp or I don't have that synth or whatever. I think all of that is pretty arbitrary. So without further ado, let's actually go ahead and get into it because we do have a little bit of stuff to go over and uh, I'm pretty proud of the studio, so I'm really excited to share it with all of you. All right, so we are in the room. Y'all have probably seen it a good bit on the channel and on our Instagram, but today I wanna go ahead and give you kind of a look behind the curtain. So we're gonna be laying over some B-roll shots. I'm gonna be sitting here, that way we can keep the lighting pretty concise. Um, but if you wanna see anything else, let me know. I can post pictures of it on my Instagram or we can do another follow-up video. But the first thing that I wanna talk about is the actual room itself because that's where everything starts. So I am in a house. Uh, my wife and I bought a house last April and one of the things we were looking for was a house that had space for me to actually put a studio in and I wanted a room that was big enough to house everything that I wanted but not so big to where I just kept buying junk and filling it up and filling it up um, and everything's pretty concise so the room that I'm in right now is 14 feet wide by 15 feet long and it's about nine and a half foot ceiling so it's not a huge room but it's also not a very very tiny room most of my past studios were like 11 by 11 so this is a nice little upgrade and I have room for everything as you can see the room is treated all around with GIK acoustics treatment so all of the black paneling that you'll see are their monster traps they're about seven and a half inches thick so they are taking up a lot of bass frequencies and then all of the little pattern things that you see around like this one behind me and in the corners that's the GIK Alpha series, so it's basically a six inch trap, and then it's just got uh, these like veneer panels over it to kind of give me a little bit of liveliness in the room. I'm not a super big fan of really, really dead recording rooms. I like to have a little bit of noise in there just because I don't feel like a super dead environment is really gonna be how anybody ever listens to the song. So I am a, a kind of a fan of having small reflections, so that's why I went with some of the kind of veneer paneling, but the corner traps are their CT alpha traps. They're basically just these big triangles that sit in the corner, and then all of the flat ones are the 6A alpha traps. Currently, I don't have any clouds hanging on the ceiling, but that is coming soon. I'm just going over whether I wanna hang some of these GIK traps in kind of like a grid, or if I just wanna do one big massive custom cloud with some in-mounted lighting, but that should be coming soon. Whenever I do that, I can post some update pictures on our Instagram. So that's pretty much it for the room. It's really nothing special. I do have a closet off of it that we'll talk about a little later, but now let's actually go ahead and start talking about what's actually in the room. And I kind of just want to start with furniture and get that out of the way, especially since that's kind of like the centerpiece of most studios. So at my core, I have the AZ Studio Workstations Artista desk, and I've made a couple modifications with them. I did a whole video last year. They were nice enough to send this to me in order for me to do a review. And so I've been using it for about a year now. I absolutely love the desk. I love the big pullout tray with my 88 keyboard underneath. That to me is really, really nice having everything that I need just within arm's reach. That way I don't have to leave to go to a bigger keyboard. And I've got some rack mounted power conditioners and stuff like that on it. So I'm able to keep cable management pretty tidy. The chair that I use every day is the Herman Miller Aeron. I bought it used for like 400 bucks. Knew they go for over a thousand. But if you check on some like resellers and wholesalers, um, you'll find that a lot of the time these like office buildings are either getting rid of chairs or they just have leftovers. And so you're normally able to get a used one or a secondhand one for like 400 to 500 instead of a thousand and honestly, it's been amazing. It's kind of saved my back over the years. Other than that, I do have a little sidecar off to the right of my desk. That kind of houses my preamps, any extra power conditioners. Um, I have like an effects unit in there. So it's nice to just get all of that away from the desk. That way I'm not constantly tinkering with it, but it is with arm's reach. If I just wheel over there, I have access to all of that. And then all of my cabling is tucked really neatly behind there. So I don't have stuff going everywhere. 
Other than that, I just have a couple fun pieces. I don't have too, too much furniture in the studio. I do have a couch that's behind this camera right now. You'll see it here with a 6A uh, alpha traps hang behind it. And then I also have a nice little kind of bookshelf over here from All Modern. Um, it is pretty simple. I just wanted something that was open that wasn't gonna cause massive reflections. And then I've just got some of my favorite like toys, collectibles. I've got like our YouTube plaque on there. Just things that I can look over when I'm working on something and they either inspire me or make me happy or just make me smile. Um, so I like having some knickknacky stuff in the studio. Otherwise it just gets really stale and cold. Also, I get a lot of questions on these two lamps that I have behind me. These are both from All Modern. They're just like Lumiere lamps. I just put adjustable bulbs in them so I can change the dimming. And I guess while we're talking about lighting, I should go ahead and address it because we do get a lot of questions about that. My overhead lighting, I have two adjustable bulbs that are just from Amazon. Um, and I just get like the cheapest ones are like 10 bucks a piece and I just control them with a smart life app and then all around on the floor I've got these little floodlights that shine up like behind my couch behind the desk behind the sense and those are also from Amazon I just got whichever ones would kind of cooperate with that app and then that's pretty much it I just have some LED strips like under the sidecar and behind the table lamp but all of my LED is from Amazon and they all work through the smart life app I don't have any Philips Hue or anything fancy like that all right and that's pretty much it for all of my furniture and decor type stuff uh, now we can go ahead and actually talk about like my essential audio stuff on my actual studio so I guess we should probably start with my interface I'm using the UAD Apollo twin duo and I do use the USB version since I am on Windows so that just basically sits right on top of my desk it's got the big knob for volume control and then I just have a cord running to my computer behind my sidecar for my speakers and monitoring I am using the Focal shape 65s I love them I have them paired with a uh, Focal I think it's sub 6 it's like an 11 inch sub and that just sits right behind my desk you can't even see it and I have it all tuned up to where it all sounds really really nice and tight um, I don't have the driving too too hard but it's just Focal and Focal behind me and then for headphones I'm normally using the Bayer Dynamic DT770 Pros other than that I do have the Slate VSX that sometimes I'll kind of check a mix on but I'm not going to them for like everyday tracking or anything like that that typically is just for the Bayer Dynamics I guess we can go ahead and talk about my computer since you know I get a lot of questions on what computer I am running it is kind of a beast and it's just a custom mod that I got from Newegg it's got 32 gigs of RAM it's got an i7 7700k and uh, it's got a one terabyte SSD SSD internal that I basically use to just hold all of my program files and then I have a four terabyte external HDD that holds kind of all of my samples all of my bounces stems things like that and then I have a bunch of one terabyte SSD Samsung drives that are all external and those will hold my sessions so if I need to go and I need to take a session all I have to do is take whichever Samsung drive is holding that session um, and I can even take my big external HDD and that'll have all of my plug-in libraries and samples and stuff like that so my system's pretty modular the only thing that's actually on my desktop are the actual um, like installation folders and program files. I've also gotten a lot of questions about this big screen right behind me. This is the Samsung, I think it's C49G. It's basically their 49 inch curved ultra wide. And the reason I opted for this was because I needed something that was gonna be big and mounted off my desk so it wasn't getting in the way of my monitors. But I wanted something that wasn't A, gonna be flat and just give me crazy phase issues and reflection issues. Um, and B, just took up a little bit less surface area and kind of looked a little bit more stylish. So I went with this, it's really, really nice. It's not the cheapest computer monitor, but but uh, the quality is really, really nice. It looks great and it's easy for my eyes to kind of focus in on. And it's super practical, which is by far the most important thing. For my main MIDI controller, I do use the M Audio Code 61. I believe it's been discontinued, but I'm not super picky on like just a MIDI controller. There's no sounds on it. So as long as the build quality is decently there and there's just some knobs that I can kind of automate with MIDI CC, um, I'm not too, too picky. I've used M Audio in the past. I've used Akai, I've used Alysis. So it's it really doesn't matter. Just find something that's gonna work with your computer and your setup and something that has reviews for decent build quality, but that's been my choice. All right, now that we've talked about my essentials, we can start to talk about some of the more specific and fun stuff that I have. Um, so I kind of want to start with my keyboards because I've been loving these a lot lately. And we'll start with my pride and joy, and that's the Roland Juno 106. This is a serial number from 1984, and my wife actually got it for me as a birthday gift last year. It's in perfect working condition. It was just renovated and kind of re reserviced, so it was perfect. She got it from Reverb. It was not the cheapest, but it was an amazing gift. And so far since February, I've used it on pretty much every session I've done, so by far already worth the money. The next synth we'll talk about is the Arteria Polybrute. This is a brand new addition for me. It's a brand new synth, and this thing is a beast. I love the morphing features, and I love being able to have these like really crazy modern pads. It's nice to have it under the Roland Juno. So I've got a little bit of the old mixed with the new, and between those two things, I've been using them for so many sessions lately, so um, it's nice. It kind of saves my CPU, and I have them both routed, so I can either track them with audio, or I can actually 
send MIDI to them and send MIDI back. So I can even control them with my M Audio keyboard over here just via MIDI, or I can just send MIDI out of my DAW and kind of route it back. So um, very rarely do I actually walk over here and physically play them for a record. I'll just go and play them for fun, or I'll just send the MIDI back over here once I dial in the patch. And then the last keyboard I have is the one that's under my desk. That is the Roland Juno DS88. I love this for its weighted keys. It's really nice to have something that kind of feels like a piano under me. And a lot of the time I'll just use this to kind of write my demos. Um, I very, very rarely track it into my DAW. It's more so just like a stage piano and something that I can kind of use to just have sound where I don't have to load up Cubase every time I want to come up with a quick writing idea. All right, so now we've talked about those, I guess we should go ahead and address the side rack. And this is probably going to answer a question that some of you have on how do I actually route the audio for all of these old synths and uh, how I'm doing that is I basically have an Audient ASP800 and that's just an eight channel preamp that I'm running with an ADAT cord into my UAD Apollo. Uh, so that extends the Apollo from two inputs to 10 inputs. And then I've just got some patch base. So I can basically just take quarter inch stereo cables from the Juno 106, from the Polybrute, and from the Juno DS88, and I route all of those into my patch bay, and then I can just plug those wherever I need. So at one given time, I can run like two microphones, three synths, a guitar, a bass, and then I've still got plenty left over. If anybody is looking for an ADAT device to expand their unit, I could not recommend the Audient ASP 800 anymore. Um, I bought it like a year, year and a half ago, and I use it every day. I love it. And for me, two preamps just wasn't enough, so it was time that I expanded and uh, it's been a perfect fit. Other than that in the rack, I just have a couple power conditioners and the patch bays, but the next fun thing that I have is the Heritage Audio HA81A. That's my new preamp in EQ, and I've been using it a ton. It sounds amazing. It's like a 1073 style preamp, and it's an 81 style EQ, so basically a 1073 just with an extra parametric EQ knob, and uh, it sounds amazing. A lot of the time I'll use it just as a preamp, and then I'll kind of loop the audio back in and post to dial in the EQ. That way I'm not committing to anything too early before you know, I, you know, I just don't want to make a wrong decision early on in the mix. Um, but it's been so nice to actually have a piece of outboard gear to just kind of get my hands on. And, you know, it makes any mic sound a little bit better um, and it makes some mic sound a lot better. So if you're looking for an outboard preamp, I think that's a good place to kind of splurge and spend a little bit of money. Other than that in the patch bay, the only last thing that I have is like the Line 6 HD pod, which I really only use to just like play out loud in the room. Like if I just want to jam along and kind of write a guitar part, I'll turn that on or I can route a splitter. So if I'm tracking guitar and I want to track it back so I can hear a tone, but I'm tracking DI, I'll have a splitter go to my preamp that's just taking DI and then I'll have a splitter go to the Line 6 so I can monitor that back in real time just through my studio monitors right here. And I'm just running all of that as well with the patch bay. So it's really nice if I just want to kind of hear the guitar out loud and I don't want to run like a UAD thing or I don't want to have latency with guitar rig. Um, I'll just kind of use it like that. The tones on it are fine, but I very rarely am using them in a full mix. All right. Speaking of guitars, I guess we should probably go over my guitars next. I have a couple that I use all the time. You'll probably see me use the Fender Strat a ton. It is an American Fender Strat professional. I have it in the Surf Green with a three single coil pickups. Um, I did not opt for the humbucker because if I need a humbucker, I have the Gibson Studio and that's just, uh, I think it's like a 2006. It's in the natural mahogany finish and it's got the two humbuckers. So between those, that's pretty much all of the electric guitars I need. I also have an old BC Rich that was the first guitar I ever bought. So I just keep it for sentimental purposes, but I very rarely bust it out and actually use it. And for acoustics earlier this year, I just bought the Taylor 214 CE Plus. It sounds beautiful. It's super punchy, really, really warm. Um, and for me, it just sounds perfect either just playing in a room or actually translating to a recording. So if you've heard anything from me in the past couple months with acoustic, it's been the Taylor. And before that, it was just this old like travel size Dean guitar that I got when I was like 14 or 15. I don't even know specifically which model it is. I just know that it is like the compact size. And then for bass, I'm very, very rarely tracking live bass, but I have one just in case I need it. And it's honestly just the Squire jazz bass that I found at Guitar Center. It was like 150 bucks used. Um, so it very rarely makes it onto a record, but if it does, it definitely gets the job done and it did not break the bank. It costs less than a literal bass plug-in. All right, the next thing we'll go over is my microphones. I have a lot of mics and I've kind of just acquired them over the years and I've worked with a couple really solid mic companies. So let's just go ahead and start with my newest one and that is the Advanced Audio 251. It's modeled after a Telefunken 251 and it sounds amazing. It has the tubes in it and then it's got all of the polar patterns and everything and it sounds incredible, especially paired with a Heritage HA81A. So I'm loving it. It's really nice. It's really warm. It's really punchy. And I've used it on every record for like the past month since I got it. 
Um, and then other than that, I use a lot of the Slate ML1 with the VMS software. So I'm sure as y'all seen on the channel, the Slate microphone makes it into a ton of videos that we do. And then other than that, my most used microphone is probably the Jay-Z Black Hole. And I just think it's really bright, it's really punchy, and I love it for things like hip-hop vocals or something that kind of has to cut through a mix. So those are by far my three most prominent used ones. And then other than that, um, I have a couple mics that I'll kind of swap in and out. I use the SM7B for like just writing demos or if I'm doing like Skype calls and stuff like that. And then other than that, we've worked with Loughton Audio in the past. So I have the 320, the 220, and a pair of 120s. I love the 120 so much. The 220 and the 320 are both great budget microphones. I just don't find myself reaching for them as often as some of my others, but I still absolutely recommend them. And then Jay-Z has also hooked me up before with a Vintage 11. So I love both of the Jay-Z mics that I have. I just tend to lean towards the black hole. Um, and both of those were gifted to me from them as well. And then other than that, I do have the Sterling ST59, which was the first like professional condenser mic I ever bought. I think it was like 300 bucks in like 2013. And I got it from Guitar Center. Um, I used it all the way until a couple years ago when I started buying and receiving more mics. And then other than that, I just have two of the AKG, I think P170s, just the little pencil condensers, um, just for in case I need two pairs, especially with the Loughton Audio 120s. That pretty much does it for all of my gear that I regularly use. I guess we can go over this little gear closet that I have. It's just right in the back over here. I'll show you some B-roll, but it's basically like seven feet long by four feet wide. I've just got a little Ikea shelf that I can kind of put whatever on top of. And then I've got the pegboards where I can hang all of my cabling and extra headphones. And then I've got just this utility kind of hanger. It's like a garage hanger for like rakes and brooms and stuff. And that's what I'll hang like mic cords. I'll hang the, the lights that I used to film, the tripod, everything kind of goes in there. So all of the floor space is pretty much always clear, but I have everything within arm's reach as soon as I need it. And I think I organized that entire closet for like less than a hundred bucks. So super, super good purchase to do the pegboards and the organizer and then the little wall thing keeps my space clean, keeps everything in arm's reach, and it's not an absolute disaster to get into. Other than that, I get a couple questions on our film gear. I am using the Panasonic G7. That's what I'm filming on right now. And I do use the Sam Yang 12 millimeter F 2.0. Um, it's just a wide lens, especially with being micro four thirds. It's more like a 24 millimeter, but I love it. It's got a pretty low F stop, which is nice for this uh, you know, really dark room that I'm in and I love it. It's super affordable. And then as far as a mic, I'm just using this like little mic pack that I found on Amazon. So I've got a lav with a wireless mic right here. And then I've got something actually on my receiver up there that just sits there all the time. And then the two lights that I use are basically just these newer panel lights. I've just got two of those. Um, I think there were a hundred bucks for the set of them on Amazon. So all of my film equipment is super, super affordable. And then Miranda edits everything on a MacBook Pro and she uses Premiere Pro, After Effects and Photoshop. I guess the last thing to kind of go over would be any of my software. So I'm not going to dive into this too much because I feel like I could do a whole separate video on this. But for my DAW, I am using Cubase 11 Pro. I love it. I've been using Cubase for years and I work with them now. Honestly, amazing DAW. I've tried others. This one just by far feels the best for me personally. And then other than that, I use a ton of the Slate bundle. I use a ton of the Plugin Alliance bundle. Um, I've got some UAD and Wave stuff, but I tend to kind of lean more towards the Slate. Fab filter is amazing. Sound toys is amazing. And then other than that, I love just getting little small plugins and stuff from like both heat companies. And then other than that, for like virtual instruments, I use a ton of Serum. I use a ton of Anna 2. Um, I use Faceplant. I use uh, the Arteria bundle. So like the V collection. And then I'm also using Spectrasonic stuff. So like Omnisphere, Keyscape, Trillion. Those are all top notch. And then I have like the complete 11 ultimate bundle. I mainly just got that so I can kind of receive sessions that are using it and just in case I have it in a pinch. I very rarely use it. The native instrument stuff is typically not my favorite personally. And then I have the East West bundle for if I do need like strings and brass and stuff like that, I can just go to my East West subscription and pull any of that out. So those are just some of my favorite and most used softwares. But if you want to see a full video or if you have any questions on software, definitely let me know because I have hundreds of plugins, some of which I've only opened like once or twice. And I think that pretty much does it. That's pretty much every everything I have in this home studio. Again, it is nice. It's nothing insanely crazy or insanely fancy. The lights make it look a lot fancier than it is, but um, I do love the gear I have. I'm very comfortable with all the gear I have, but I know that a lot of you have asked questions about the studio, so I wanted to go ahead and show you everything that I'm working with, and hopefully this helped. Again, if you have any questions, let us know in the comments down below. If you want to check out any more of our content, you can head over to makepopmusic.com, and you can check out all of our samples, presets, courses. We've got blog posts. You can find links to other videos, and then feel free to come join us in the Facebook community or follow us on Instagram to see more exclusive content for those platforms. But other than that, that's going to do it for this video. We will be back next week with some 
actual tutorials, but I wanted you guys to have the studio tour that y'all have been asking for for a while. So I hope you guys enjoyed this. I will be back next time. Until then, much love everyone. Peace.